Thank you so much. It's a pleasure and honor to be here today at IIT Lucknow. And today I've structured my talk in two parts. The first part, all of us here will be doing some number crunching. Okay? I know a lot many people like math, but it's my job today to ensure that everybody sitting in the audience today have some fun with numbers. But at the second part of my talk, I'll be taking you through my personal journey, the Vedic Maths way. Let's try a sutra then. In Vedic Maths, there are 16 sutras or word formulas by which anybody can make math simple and easy. Today I'm going to present to you above the base method and the name of the sutra is called the Nikhilam Sutra. Let's try this a simple multiplication sum, ladies and gentlemen. We have 14 times 12. Okay, so how do we do that? Now look here, 14 and 12 are both nearest to 10, yes, no? Is 14 above 10 or below 10? Above by how much? So you write plus 4 there. And 12. What do we write for 12? Plus 2. Now the first rule which you apply here, guys, is you need to crosswise add, like this. So 12 plus 4 is 16. Also you will note 14 plus 2 is also 16, which is the first part of your answer. And to arrive at the second part of your answer, you need to multiply vertically, which is you multiply 2 and 4 together, that gives you 8. And your answer becomes 168. We're going to do mental squaring today. The same principle applies here. Instead, that the numbers are closest to 100. So is 101 above 100, below 100? Above by how much? So write plus 01 there. And again, you write plus 01 there. And all you need to do is crosswise add, like this. So 101 plus 1 gives you? 102. And 01 multiplied with 01 gives you? 01. And that's your answer. 10201. Let's see if you can do the next sum on the board mentally. Come on. 102 multiplied with 102 gives you how much? No? Come on, let's do this together. Yes. Let's do this together. This one, 102 multiplied with 102. So 102 is above 100, below 100. By how much? 2. So that 2 which is the excess gets added back to 102 and how much that does that give you? 104 and then 02 squared gives you 04. So the answer for that one is 10404. 103 multiplied with 103 is how much? 10609. Fantastic. We're going to go ahead with these five squares and let everybody please do it. Okay, I want to hear your voice loud and clear. 104 squared is how much? 10816. Okay, this is how we say it. When I raise my hand, you're going to say the answer. Okay, and like this. So the first one is 104 squared. You're going to solve it and say 10816. Is that okay? Yes? Can we do that? Okay, so let's go for the next one. 105 squared. Think for a minute. Think for a minute. Now let's say it together. One, zero, fantastic. Let's do the next one. Everybody, come on. One, absolutely, it is one, one, two, three, six. And the second last one out there is one, zero, seven squared. This is how much? It is one, one, absolutely. It's one, one, four, four, nine. You have got the pattern absolutely correct. And the last one out there is 108 squared. One. Yeah, let's do it one more time, just a little louder. One, one, six, six, four. Okay, so that was uh, the part one of my talk. And that's the proof behind it as to how is this made 
possible. This is a principle. Every Vedic math formula has a proof. And this is the proof of the base method we just did. We're going to now do an interesting part of Vedic Maths. It's called converting fractions to decimals. All right? Using a concept called auxiliary fractions. Okay, I repeat that. We're going to convert fractions to decimals using a Vedic Maths concept called auxiliary fractions. What does auxiliary mean? It means something giving support, something which is serving as an aid, Something which is very helpful, right? So with that, I want to introduce a basic concept first. Okay? Let's take a fraction, 23 by 8. Can you tell me what is the quotient and what is the remainder? 23 by 8, what is your quotient? 2, exactly. And what's your remainder? 7, fantastic. What is the quotient when you have 5 by 12? Your quotient is? 0, right. And remainder? Five. Say we got this fraction called 1 by 19. Now mind you, this rule applies to denominators ending in a 9. So we got 1 by 19 there. Now 19 is closest to which multiple of 10? 20. So equate that to 1 by 20. And then divide numerator and the denominator by 10. So we got 0 0.1 by 2. AF. AF stands for auxiliary fraction. Okay, now the fun starts. Write zero point. And start dividing like this. This is something new. It'll take a while, but you'll get it. Okay, just give it a minute to this. 0 0.1 by 2, right? So 1 divided by 2. What's your quotient? 0. And what's your remainder? 1. So you put 1 there. And that becomes 10. You take that one remainder, put it before the 0, becomes 10. And then 10 by 2 is how much? Everybody, 10 by 2 is 5. And remainder? 0. So you put 0 there. So that becomes 0, 5. And then 0, 5 divided by 2 gives you how much? Gives you 2. Remainder? 1. Absolutely. Come on, do this one for me. 12 by 2, everybody in the room. 12 by 2 is how much? 6. And remainder? 0. And let's go one step more. 0, 6 divided by 2 gives you how much? 3. And remainder? 0. And 0, 3 by 2 gives you 1. Remainder? 1. And then that goes on. So your answer for 1 by 19 is 0 0.05263315. How cool is that? It takes a while and you get your answer right on there. And if you convert it to a percentage, that becomes 5.263%. You just need to multiply that with 100. Let's take one, 6 by 29. Okay, this is 6 by 29. And we're going to take a jab at it. 29 is closest to 30. So we have 6 by 30. And then we divide numerator and the denominator by 10. And that gives you 0 0.6 by 3 auxiliary fraction. Let's now see how this fraction converts to a decimal. Okay, so you put your 0 point. Now, 6 divided by 3 gives you how much? 2. Remainder? 0. You put 0 there. Now, 0, 2 divided by 3, quotient is how much? It's 0. Remainder? 2. So that becomes 20. Alright? 20 divided by 3 gives you how much? It gives you 6. Remainder? 2. 26 by 3 gives you a 8. And remainder? 2. So 28. And 28 by 3, ladies and gentlemen, gives you a 9. And then it goes on because 1 is your remainder and that goes on. So if you want to convert that uh, to your percentage, just multiply that with 100 and you get 20.689%. Right? And this is the proof as to why that works and how does it work. 
Vedic Maths. Why did I choose as calling for my career a concept such as Vedic Maths? Friends, I was preparing for my MBA entrance examination 20 years ago in 1999. And it was then that my mother got me a book called Vedic Mathematics. And it was in that book that dazzled my mind away. The method which I showed you blew me away. The concepts of Vedic Maths. Nobody knew this. People knew about yoga. People knew about Ayurveda. But this was something which was missing. Not many people knew about it. And it was such a treasure trove that everybody could learn it and gain something out of it to make maths easy, to make maths simple. And I thought that why can't I make this my calling? So one fine day, I receive a call from a principal in Kolkata. The referral word spread that I was teaching this concept. I get a call and uh, I was asked, can you do a workshop for 200 students on Vedic maths? I was like, ma'am, I have not spoken in front of 20 people. I was just 19 or 20 years old then. I have not spoken in front of 20 people. How do you expect me to train your 200 students? Whatever happened was history. And then I went for the workshop, conducted it with all my passion. I also made some good mistakes. It was my first workshop and ever on Vedic Maths in Kolkata. And after that, the next morning blew me away. It came out in the newspaper. I said, wow, this is getting nice that everybody struggles with maths and you have a medicine in the form of Vedic maths. So I started researching more. My interest started developing that yes, this can be taken to a whole lot of people. He is the founder of Vedic mathematics. His name is Tirthaji. He was an ancient seer and in the 20, 20th century, and he wrote a book called Vedic Maths. And then he was, he expired and took Samadhi in 1960, and the book was published posthumously. And then the road, because he was a Sankaracharya of Puri, I went and met his predecessor. He's the current Sankaracharya of Puri. So I went up to him, it's just a night's, uh, journey from Kolkata, I went up to him and asked him, Sir, can you teach me Vedic Maths? He said, why not? I stayed with him for some time, learned the concepts, exchanged notes, took Diksha and started promoting it. In the field, I was hungry for knowledge. I used to go to ISKCON temples and ask the monks out there if anybody is there in Vedic Maths. I visited the Ramakishan mission and I also happened to meet and get mentored from Shakuntala Devi. And I tried to grab as much as I can, as much information I could. To promote this, I launched a website in 2006. And then the story started changing. I started getting invitations to speak from all across the country. I then started a blog in 2006 as well. Today it has has 500 articles on Vedic Maths and over 10,000 subscribers in the niche. And one fine day, I find myself in New York giving a talk at the TED platform. This was one of the first seminal talk ever to be given on Vedic Maths and introducing it to the world. Why isn't it being introduced in the curriculum in India? Problem kya hai? So I thought that maybe I was too young at that point of time. It's seven years already. And I thought I'll meet some ministers and education ministers, which I'm doing right now, and making a documentary and finding out ki why can't it get implemented in India? I authored some books and wrote some articles in the field, which started getting popular. And then the video started happening. I shot a video for Tata Sky. And then the idea was to take Vedic Maths pan India so that every child can learn this. So it was, the idea was to transcend to the next frontier and to take this message of Vedic Maths to as far as possible. So it was transcending the frontier every minute from workshops, website, 
blogs, books, to Alexa skills, to investors, to the 24 by 7 hub. What's next for us? How can we challenge ourselves and what will be the next frontier? This is the next frontier. Taking Vedic maths is as part of the education policy as ancient Indian knowledge systems and uh, every child should learn the Vedic math system. So I want to leave you with a quote by T.S. Eliot. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. For